Hello and welcome to this video that's going to show you how to make a Pac-Man sprite with a uh, opening and closing mouth that is automatically sort of animated to run throughout the game and um, has a little red dot which I'm going to explain in a moment. Okay, so let's get started with making our Pac-Man. So um, you've seen what it's going to look like in the end um, and now I'm going to show you how we get there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of our cat because we don't want a cat in our Pac-Man game. So to do that um, we can just right click on Sprite 1 and we can go to delete. So gone, excellent. And we're going to make a new Sprite which is going to contain our Pac-Man. So we click this little paintbrush Okay, and you'll see we get this sort of editor screen where we can draw um, our Pac-Man. So Pac-Man is basically a circle um, a, with like a, a mouth cut out, a bit like a pizza slice. So we're going to start with using um, the circle tool here and we want to choose a filled in circle. Okay, so we're going to click on this down here. So this would just draw a circle uh, where you can just see the outline but nothing filled in, so sort of transparent in the middle. Whereas this one is going to be um, a filled in circle. And I'm going to make my Pac-Man yellow. That's kind of traditional. You could choose a different color if you wanted to. It's up to you. And as I, um, before I click and drag, I'm going to hold down the Shift key. And that will enable me to draw a perfect circle. So hold down Shift and then click and drag your circle. And you want to keep it pretty central. Uh, within your sprite, sorry, within your um, editing area. And if you haven't got it quite central like I haven't, you can click and drag and move it. Okay, so we've got a Pac-Man circle, we've got sort of the outline. Um, in a moment, I'm going to duplicate this and show how to cut out a mouth shape. But before I do, there's one really important extra thing we have to do, which will make sense later when we come to moving Pac-Man. But we need to put a little dot in front of Pac-Man that is of a different color. And this is what we're gonna to use to check if Pac-Man is colliding with a wall or not. Okay, so we can use a filled in rectangle for this. And as I say, pick a different color, uh, something like the dark purple I'm gonna use. You could use anything you like. Now, it's gotta be Pretty, it's got to be pretty much in line with the center um, and quite near, quite close to the edge of Pac-Man. So I'm going to draw it about here and it's got to be quite a good size so that when we make our Pac-Man um, smaller within our maze, it still shows up. Okay, so something like this should do the trick. So if you click off, you can see I've got my circle, which is going to be the base of my Pac-Man and I've got um, my collision detecting block here. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this Pac-Man costume because we need to have two states to our Pac-Man, one with the mouth open, one with the mouth closed, and we're going to animate between the two. So I just need to right click up here and I can press duplicate and we'll get two. Okay, and on this second one I can quite easily use the brush tool, or in fact this, actually I'm going to use the eraser tool, and we can just rub out uh, a mouth shape. And you can make the eraser a bit wider if it helps. Okay, and it's just looks like a slice of pizza's been taken out, really. Okay, so that's, don't have to be too perfect with this. Uh, that's, that's, that's good enough, I think. By the time we've made Pac-Man small enough to fit in our maze, you're not gonna notice a few little wobbly lines. But if you're a bit of a perfectionist like me, you can, you can clear it up if you like. Okay, so we've got our two states of our Pac-Man, mouth open, mouth closed. And to make things a bit easier for us later, I'm going to name each costume. So up here it says costume one, I'm going to call that closed, and I'm going to call costume two open. And I encourage you guys to do the same. It's really, really important to get into good habits early on as you start programming. And having sensible names for everything is really vital. And um, with that in mind, let's change the name of Pac-Man from Sprite 1 to Pac-Man. So we click on the little information icon here, and where it says 
pack uh, sprite one, I'm going to change that to Pac-Man. Okay, so this out of interest is where we set our preferences for each sprite and we can choose can they rotate round, can they just flip back and forward, or do they not rotate at all? Uh, which direction are they pointing in? Um, can they be dragged around by players in the game and should they be visible in the game at, at, by default? Um, we can leave those other options alone for now, for this game, but um, suffice to say, we want to call it Pac-Man. Okay, so we go back and we've got our Pac-Man sprite and our Pac-Man has open and closed mouth. Fantastic. So the first thing um, is done. We've drawn our Pac-Man. Now we want to add a script that's going to enable um, Pac-Man's mouth to open and close in an animated fashion. So we go to scripts, okay, and we want this to happen when the user clicks the green button because that's kind of the start of our game. So we go to events, when green flag is clicked, uh, and we want something that's going to loop around forever because um, throughout the entire game we want this to happen. So forever I want to, and under looks, I want to go to the next costume. Now what that's going to do, if we imagine our costumes here, if I start in costume 1, the next costume is costume 2. I hope that isn't a surprise to anybody. Um, but what's interesting is that the next costume after costume 2, it loops around and goes back to costume 1 again. So effectively what this is doing is saying forever, just keep switching or alternating between those two costumes. So let's uh, press the green flag button and see how this looks. Right, you may not be able to see this, but that's actually happening very, very, very quickly and far too quick for our game. So we need to introduce a little bit of a delay into this. So in order to do that, we're going to go to control. And control is where we can find everything that sort of determines how should the program move uh, or flow. And uh, one of the things we can do is introduce a pause or a wait block. So I'm going to drag that in here. So I'm going to say forever, switch to the next costume and then wait a little bit before it does the next loop. But one second, that's very slow. Uh, that doesn't look very good at all. So let's change that figure. And I suggest something like 0.2 seconds is a good amount. And if we click on the green flag, you'll see a nicely animating mouth. So that's pretty good. So there we go, we've got a Pac-Man drawn with two states and it animates between them. We've got our collision detector ready for the next stage and uh, the animation's happening at a good speed as well. So if you haven't done that, stop here, go to Scratch and do what I've just done and I will catch up with you when we're ready to make the maze.